Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to teach you about saltwater etching. Now saltwater etching uses a purified salt. So for this project you're going to need to buy either kosher salt or some other purified salt product. Now the salt is put into a very, very saturated solution. So you're going to mix it with water. You can use regular tap water and we're going to combine it together in a glass or plastic receptacle. Now, the way that this works is kind of the opposite of electroplating. We're actually pulling metal away using electricity. So the setup kind of looks like this. We have a glass receptacle, and on one side I have my positive charged side with your project right here. So there's your project and we're going to submerge that in the solution and on the opposite side I have on the negative connector a piece of scrap copper okay and what we're going to do is we're going to connect this to an electrical power source and what this does is it's going to pull material from your project leaving the pattern and texture that you desire while adding that material to the negative terminal now to make this happen, you're going to have to protect out the areas that you want to preserve on your project in order to achieve the design or texture that you want. Now you also need to protect the back as well. Let me show you the tools and this will make more sense. So what we're going to be using today is a 9 volt battery. Now this battery is going to be connected to wires using a battery connector. You can get this for a couple of dollars at a hardware store. Now it has a black and a red wire coming off of it and you're going to connect these two alligator clips that have corresponding colors on their ends. And in this case the red is your positive terminal. That's the one you put your project to. You're going to need some 14 gauge copper wire. Now you can use a larger gauge but don't use a smaller gauge. You're also going to need the copper for your project and some scrap copper. Now the scrap copper is attached to the negative terminal. Your project is attached to the positive terminal. Now we need to protect your piece from being completely eaten away. You got to protect the sides and the back area because they will be attacked too. The best way to protect the back is with contact paper. Just remove the paper from the adhesive side of the contact paper and then just lay your piece down and burnish the contact paper onto that surface. Now if you want to, you can actually take the rest of the contact paper here and fold it over and you could remove some of it in order to create a pattern or texture. But let me show you some other ways you can do that. Here I've got a couple of test discs that are already covered front and back with the contact paper. Now other resists that I like to use are clear nail lacquer or enamel paint. Now you could also use stickers and you can cut out patterns from the contact paper itself. If you use enamel paint you're going to need a paintbrush and if you're using stickers or contact paper you may need some cutting implements. So I've got an X-Acto blade and I've also got a paper punch. Now this is the type of paper punch that scrapbookers use so if you're into scrapbooking you might be able to use your paper punches for this project as well. You're also going to need some pliers and a pair of wire cutters. Now don't forget put on your eye protection and protect your clothing with an apron. This shouldn't produce anything terrible that you want to breathe or have splashed on you but always work safely. And we've also got our ventilation system set up right here. If you don't have one of these set up you could set this up outside. Let me show you some examples that I've made to better demonstrate this project. Now, I took enamel paint pen and applied it to one of my test discs. But the enamel paint pen wore off after about eight minutes. So this piece was only in the salt solution for about eight minutes and I got a very, very hazy edge, not very deep, and all of the paint pen disappeared. So this one is a combination of permanent marker and the paint pen, but after 18 minutes, those materials disappeared and I got sort of a rough etching that didn't show me great detail. Now this one up here, I used contact paper and nail lacquer 
and I left it in for an hour and I got a really deep crisp etching and if I flip it over you can see I still got my contact paper on the back side that's fully preserved so this piece is in great shape. So over here what I've done is I've prepared the piece for etching by cutting a piece of contact paper using the paper punch. Now I've applied the contact paper onto the surface and I protected the back side with contact paper. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get my design pattern like this as the most top surface and the background will be a little bit further away from it because it will be etched away. Now I took the other half of the contact paper and applied it here and I'll get just the opposite. I'll have an area that's nice and flat and the pattern will be etched into it. And again, the back surface and edges are protected. Finally, this last one, I've taken the blue enamel paint, you can use any color, and I've painted sort of a radial sunburst. Now, this is also protected on the edges and the back. So, using this one, let me show you how the process works. I'm just going to scoot all this aside, and I'm going to remove your model your great project and I'm going to use the one with the blue enamel paint and I'll put it onto the positive terminal. So I've attached that there. I do have my piece of scrap copper attached to my negative terminal. So next what I want to do is I want to fill either my glass or plastic container with a highly saturated salt solution. You can boil your water in the microwave or on the stove top and dissolve as much salt into it as you possibly can. When you fill the container, you just want to make sure that your project is completely submerged. And you also want to make sure that the negative area is also completely submerged. I'll just add a little bit more. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now what I need to do is connect my power source and make sure that I've got the right terminal connections there we go. Now you can see almost instantly I get some bubbling on the negative terminal. So if you, if you aren't really sure which side is positive or negative on your battery, you'll know whichever side starts bubbling first is actually the negative terminal. Alright, so this needs to sit for about an hour in order to get a nice deep crisp etch. I'll set up the other pieces as well and I'll come back in an hour and show you the results. Well, it's been about an hour, so let's see what the results are. First, what I want to do is I want to disconnect my power source, which is easy. I just unclip the battery, and that stops the process completely. Okay, now I can pick up the positive terminal and take a look at that. Look at how thin that wire has gotten just from sitting in the solution and having the process happen for the last hour. All right, so if it had gone any longer, the piece would have fallen into the solution. And we have a beautiful deep etch. Now let me just blot this out. And you can see I got a lot of detail, but it's kind of hard to tell with that blue. So let me remove the blue paint. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop it into some paint thinner here and allow it to come off a little bit. And this is a very, very simple process. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me get it out of the paint thinner and blot it off again. Wow. So we got a beautiful deep etch. So now I have a beautiful sunburst pattern and lots of little cells to play with. I could either put some color in there using colored pencil and, and gesso or I could maybe use some uh, enamel. And if you look at the items next to it you can see what I got using the contact paper. So remember this one I had cut out a negative design from the contact paper and applied it. Look how great that is. It just totally isolated that image right on the surface. The one next to it, you remember I used the cutout and some little droplets of uh, liquid nail lacquer. And it's a little bit rougher and maybe a little bit more difficult to see, but again, a really nice deep etch. So 
Let me show you the last part of this process, which is the disposal of this material. So what you want to do is get your wires out of there, and you do want to dry things off and put these away for another day. Now, you've got some material here that's basically salt water with a lot of copper in it. You don't want to throw it down the drain because your local municipality is probably using microorganisms in the sewer system to break down solid waste, and copper would kill that. So what I recommend doing for the time being is pour this solution into some clay cat litter. There you go. And now this could sit for a few days outside and dry out, and I'll probably be able to throw it into the rest of my trash and send it to the landfill. Don't forget to check with your local municipality for laws governing the proper disposal of hazardous waste material. I hope you have fun with this project. Be sure to check out our other videos and products on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Thanks for watching.